What's going on, Glorifiers? It's Mariah Elise. This is Dear Glory, and I'm back today because I got to talk to y'all about something, okay? I need you to put all the distractions away and listen. This one is important. After reading a recent article in the New York Times titled, Young Artist Wrote a $712 Million Boom and Then Came to Bust. First of all, catchy title. Second of all, true. <laughs> okay, how true can it be? It's a story we've seen play out in the art world time and time again, not just with the artists that the New York Times talked about, but with a lot of different artists. And it's something that I've spoken about multiple times on this channel, the possibility of it and the importance of working with collectors that have integrity. If you've been here a while, you've heard me say the word integrity, integral a thousand times. But with this new article, I think it's time that we dig a little bit deeper and talk about what's really going on. Let's start with the story the New York Times is telling of Imani Lewis, who I've talked about before because their work is so incredibly beautiful. They're a talented young artist who's experienced a crazy meteoric rise in the art world. Now, their work was selling for astronomical prices, okay? As you can see, in 2021, this work that was executed in 2020 had an estimate between thirty and sixty thousand dollars. It sold for a hundred and seven thousand dollars. This is a young contemporary artist. Now, I'm sure it seemed to some people that are just didn't know what was going on that they had really made it. It kept happening for them time and time again. But when you put it in contrast to just a few months ago, we see a work that's in similar size estimated between 15 and 20,000 sell for $10,160 below the estimate. Just a few years ago, it seemed like they might've had it all figured out. Okay, now if you really know the market, you've seen it coming. I'm sure that the artists thought that things couldn't change for the worse and wouldn't change for the worse. And my heart goes out to the artists. I really, really hate that this happened to them. But as quickly as it started, as quickly as it rose is as quickly as the market corrected itself. Now, if you're familiar with financial terms, you understand what I'm saying. You understand and you understood back then that the market was going to correct itself and their work plummeted. It plummeted in value. Now, let me let me say this. I do have faith that Amani will be able to get her market back to where it should be because I do think that they're great enough of an artist and have enough support around them to get it back. I do believe that and I do pray that and I do hope that for Imani and for Emmanuel Taku, who the New York Times talked about. This isn't just an isolated incident. It's a pattern that we've seen quite a few times. It's something that's been whispered around for the last two years. A lot of people seen this coming. A lot of people seen it happening, especially with these young contemporary artists that people are just throwing into the auction, into the auction houses, speculating their prices all the way up. And now this has happened to so many artists. So why does this happen? The art market is like, but also unlike any other market. It's driven by a combination of subjective factors, like the emotional impact of the work and external factors like market trends, economic conditions, but there's also this darker side to the market, which is speculation, which exists in almost every market. So let's talk about it. In the financial world, there's a term called pump and dump, and I'm sure you've heard of it. It's when the price of a stock is artificially inflated by speculators only for it to crash when they sell off their shares at the top, right? Does that sound familiar to you? <laughs> a perfect example of this is what happened with GameStop, if you remember that. Or for my older folks, I know you guys remember Enron. Speculators drove up the perception of demand, and when the stock was at its peak, they sold, leaving all these everyday investors holding a bag when it crashed. That pump and dump is used to describe that scheme when it's, there's artificial inflation with misled information only to crash when the insiders sell off their shares at the peak, okay? A similar phenomenon happens in the music industry. We see it all the time where some artists are rapidly hyped. You're like, man, they blew up overnight. Their popularity surges like crazy and then they fade into this obscurity once the initial buzz wears off. We, we call those people the one hit wonders. Now you might be wondering, what does this have to do with the art market? Well, a similar thing happens with young contemporary artists. Speculators buy up an artist's work, many at a time, five, 10 pieces at a time, driving up the prices with the intention of flipping the works, for a quick profit. But when the market becomes oversaturated, 
or the speculative bubble burst, these prices plummet, often leaving uh, the artist's reputation and their career severely and crazily damaged. It happens in almost every market. Now this pump and dub cycle can be devastating for artists. It can ruin their careers, especially those that are not prepared for the realities of what the art market is or what any market is. It is incredibly rare to make a significant return at auction from young contemporary artists, unless you get in at the top. And at that point, you don't have no integrity. At that point, you're a flipper. You're not really a collector. Now we've seen a few people like Amuaka Buafo and his career success and man, he quickly got some pillars around him. He got museum support around him. He got gallery support around him. And I'm not saying that Amani and Emmanuel Taku didn't put the support around them. I'm saying you have to be very, very strategic about the decisions you make and the people that you work with if something like this were to happen to you. Now, before I keep going, I do want to recommend a book for you guys to read, for artists to read, which is How to Become a Successful Artist by uh, Magnus Resch. Artists, please, please, please read this book. It's the most simplistic form of a breakdown that I've read to date. If you want to, just go ahead and click the link in my description and get it now. Do not wait. Read the book. Read the book and take all of that information in. Magnus Resch is a real big data guy. Data is not something that's very put forward in this industry. So a lot of people don't know what to do in the market because it's not studied in numbers in the way of data or if it is, which it is in many different forms, you have to buy that information. Now at its core, the value of art is influenced by the fundamental principles of supply and demand. However, in the art world, these forces, they're a lot more nuanced. Several factors, including the artist's reputation, market trends, economic conditions, and the perceived rarity of the work can kind of determine the prices. And honestly, it's, there's a lot more factors than that. For instance, an artist with a really strong reputation bolstered by consistent quality, strategic and strong A-list gallery partnerships, like a really good, strong gallery partnership and positive press can maintain, it can maintain demand on the primary market. Now, conversely, artists who flood the market with too many works, too many pieces too quickly and with the wrong people, keep that in mind, with the wrong people can dilute their value leading to a decrease in demand and a corresponding drop in prices. I've seen it happen time and time again. Even an artist just rising their prices too high on the primary market, higher than what their value should be in correlation to the pillars around them, in correlation to their CV, in correlation to what they've done in the past. And artists rising their prices too fast can have one of the same effects that your work going to auction and rising too high at auction. You want to be very slow with your growth, very steady with your growth. So timing is another critical factor. Now, look, just as investors in the stock market decide in time when to buy and when to sell, artists and their representatives need to be aware of broader market trends. Now, listen, in economic downturns, collectors, people may become more conservative in their spending. In an economic downturn, collectors might try to liquidate what they can. People try to liquidate what they can. And I think that's what might have happened with Imani. I think I read this correctly. One of the guys who sold her artworks needed to do some home renovations or something. He said, hey, I got to sell this. I need to liquidate some of the things in my life. And you know what? That's what people do with investments. When you look at things as an investment, when you look at things with monetary value, which are most things we buy, should hopefully, we hope that they maintain their monetary value. When it gets to a hard time, you look around and you say, what can I liquidate? And when that happens and they try to get their money back at a bad time and they'll hold on, they don't hold on to the work. That's when the work goes for 10 grand. When at first it went for a hundred grand. I mean, listen, timing is another critical factor. Just as investors in the stock market monitor economic trends to determine whether to buy or sell, artists and their representative need to be aware of these broader marketing trends during these economic downturns. Now, conversely, in a booming market, demand might, demand might outstrip supply. It's a supply and demand game in all markets. Demand might outstrip supply, driving prices higher. Listen, what is happening this year and late last year is a reflection of an economic downturn. We're all, we all know we're in it, everybody. 
If you look around, turn to your neighbor on your left, turn to your neighbor on the right. We all know we're in an economic downturn right now. And it's an election year. What's happening this year and late last year is a reflection of where we are economically. What happened in 2020 and 2021 was a reflection of a popping economy. And it was really not a real popping economy. It was the illusion of a popping economy. Pay attention to the world. Pay attention to what is happening beyond the art world. And you'll understand the position that the art market is in right now, similar to many other markets. If you want a broader perspective, I spoke broadly about this in my video, The Layers of Art Economics from Global to Local. Check that video out. Now, by understanding these factors, an artist can make an informed decision about how and when to release their work. This strategic approach can really help maintain demand, protect their reputation, and avoid pitfalls and speculation. All the artists out there in the world, look, you don't have to be scared. This is not something that's going to happen to everyone. And it has to be an ideal time for it to happen. Okay, it has to be an ideal time in the world for it to happen. There should be no fear mongering. You shouldn't be afraid. These are just things you should know because you should understand the market that you're in as an artist. So how can you as an artist protect yourself from this type of market manipulation in the first place? I suggest everyone be a selective be selective about your sales. I know that sounds like being a gatekeeper. Now, when I was first into this industry and I was looking around and I was looking at how hard it was for people to buy things, it was a hard time for people to buy things. Though I think a lot of factors, unfair factors play into that. Uh, I don't think it has to be as tight nipped as it is. I think a lot of people make a lot of decision who they sell to based on um, a cast of things, if you understand what I'm saying. But I still believe that you have to be selective about who you sell your work to. Don't flood your market with your work to a whole bunch of people that you don't sit down and have a conversation with. Selling too many pieces at once, especially to one person, speculators, can lead to oversupply, driving down your prices and harming your reputation if they don't have best practices at hand. If, people, if someone tries to buy five works at a time, I just want you to stop and think. Think about the market, think about what's happening in the world, and think about getting some advice. Just think. Instead, focus on building long-term relationships with genuine collectors, people that value your work for the artistic merit, not just its resale potential. When they start asking too many questions about resale, 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 just put your little antennas up because there are a lot of factors and a lot of reasons why someone should wanna buy an artwork other than its financial and resale potential. Again, this is not, for, this is not gonna happen to everybody. <laughs> this is not an everyone thing, it's just a, know this thing now the next thing is to align yourself with strong galleries these galleries play a crucial role in managing the distribution and pricing of your work now make sure that they are managing the distribution and they are managing the pricing of your work because another issue could be your gallery driving your prices too high to the point to where your prices are galleries and advisors play a crucial role in protecting artists from the dangers of speculation and market volatility. Not just speculation, but market volatility, both of them. Now by carefully managing the distribution and pricing of an artist's artwork, they can help maintain demand and keep the market from becoming overstimulated by the artist and oversaturated by the artist. This is why the galleries, this is why this world feels very gatekept because they're being selective about who they're selling to and how they're promoting the artist's work. And, and to an extent, they have to be, they gotta be in order to protect their long-term career. However, again, I wanna tell you, it's also important for artists to choose their galleries and their advisors wisely. An advisor who promises that your work will skyrocket in value, they're probably selling you a dream. A lot of people are selling a lot of people dreams and you gotta take a step back and look at where the dream is. Galleries and advisors are selective and they should be about who they sell to and how they promote an artist's work in order to protect the artist's long-term career. However, it's also important for artists to make sure that, you know, your galleries is not being racist or sexist or classes or any of the isms when they are selling your work because there's that in this world as well. But it is important for galleries dealers, advisors to make these decisions wisely. But I wanna to get to the real secret. The real secret 
to a sustainable and successful career is controlled, steady growth. We've all heard the story of the tortoise and the hare, and in the art world, the tortoise wins. By growing your career slowly and steadily, you avoid the pitfalls of overstimulation and oversaturation in the art world. Controlled growth allows you to control how your work is released and that your reputation continues to build over time. Now, I know this can feel overwhelming, all of this information, if you're navigating this world on your own. And that's why I offer private consulting services to help artists as much as I can from the position that I'm in, from my education level. I don't know everything, but I am a student and I am a learner. And so I do have private consulting to help artists and help collectors make informed decisions and build sustainable careers and sustainable collections. So if you're interested in working together, I've created a quick compatibility quiz uh, and the link is in the description. It's super easy to complete. It's gonna help us both know if we're both a good fit. The link to the, the compatibility quiz is in the description. If it looks like we're a good match, we can schedule a 15 minute call, a free 15 minute call, one-on-one -on -one session to get better acquainted with one another and talk a little bit more about your goals and if we're a good fit, and if, if I can assist you, whether you're an artist looking to make be better decisions in your career or a collector looking to make better decisions in your collecting journey, I just, I'm here to help you uh, navigate that. Now back, to, now back to the subject. Rather than chasing quick success, focus on consistently improving your craft, building meaningful relationships, and making strategic decisions about where and how your work is shown and sold. This approach not only protects the value of your work, but also sets the foundation for a long and fulfilling and sustainable career. Now, I am aware that for most artists, their work is extremely and deeply personal. For most collectors, once they buy it, it's extremely and deeply emotional and personal. And I understand that it's a reflection of their experiences, of their emotions, and a projection of their creativity. I get that. However, once an artwork enters the market, it also becomes a commodity. It was bought. Someone spent money on it. This dual nature of art, personal expression versus market commodity, it can be challenging for artists to understand and navigate. It's crucial for artists to be realistic about this duality. Why your artwork may be an extension of who you are, of your soul, to collectors, galleries, and advisors, it is also something that they're selling and something that they're buying. But there is a monetary value that's placed on the artwork and they do wanna make sure that they are maintaining their value. So be real about the amount of money that you're asking them to spend, that they're spending, you're asking folks to spend. When you ask someone to spend $40,000, $10,000, if you think that they want that to depreciate, crazy. They at least want it to hold. As an artist, stay connected to the emotional and creative aspects of your work but also recognize and respect the financial considerations that collectors and galleries bring to the table. Now, understanding the market doesn't mean compromising your artistic integrity. Don't get it twisted. Don't get that messed up, okay? A lot of people think that when they start assigning monetary value to their work, um, they're compromising their artistic integrity. No, it's gonna equip you with the knowledge that you need to navigate the art world more effectively by being realistic about the dual nature of your work as both a personal expression and a market commodity, you can better protect your career and make sure that you have long-term success. Look, there has to be an understanding of the forces that drive art prices. Learning how to navigate them is crucial for everyone in this market. While your work might be deeply personal to you, again, it's important to recognize that it also that you are placing a monetary value on it. Now I'm gonna end this by reminding you guys that I do offer private consulting and I do encourage you to take my compatibility quiz that I link in the description below. It's super easy. It'll let us know if we're a good fit to work together. Navigating this world is overwhelming. It's not easy, it's hard. And it deserves someone that is con always being studious, taking all of their time and always and all of their efforts being a student of what this world is and what this market is. Now, I, I, can always, I can always be more educated. I can always do better in educating myself. I'm a constant learner. And the things that I learn, I give it to you from my perspective. 
I always want to know you guys' perspective, so make sure you leave your thoughts in the comments. Now, while I have you here, I also want to let you know about my two masterclasses that I have coming up in October. Now, the first one is about mastering your art collection, and it's Essential Strategies for New Collectors on October 12th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. It's a two-hour course. This class is designed to specifically, specifically for new collectors who want to build a strong mistake-free collection. Now, I can't promise that you're going to have a mistake-free co collection. I can't say that from this one masterclass, but I can say that it will give you the tools that you need to building a, a mistake-free collection. You're going to learn best practices, and you're going to gain the confidence to make informed decisions as you start your collecting journey. The link for that is in the description. I have one more masterclass coming up for artists, a blueprint for success for new artists on October 19th, also from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. It's a two-hour class. This class is all about providing you with essential strategies to navigate your journey with confidence. You're going to get a, a clear, actionable roadmap that's going to help you avoid mistakes and it's going to guide you towards achieving your career goals. If you're serious about elevating your career, don't miss this. The link for that is in my description. Both links are in my description. Just remember that knowledge is power, especially in the art world. By taking the time to understand the market, you're going to be able to make informed decisions that's going to protect you, your reputation, and your career for years to come. The art market is volatile, regardless of what you hear. And it's hard. And it's it's not the easiest thing in the world. But you can survive and you can thrive. You can do well in this in the art world. There remember, there are different types of there are different types of success in the art world. You don't have to go to auction to be successful, make sure you understand what type of success you're looking for. Chasing one type of success is not necessary. Anyway, I thank y'all so much for being here. Share this with somebody who might be interested in this, might have some opposing thoughts. Share it with someone who might need to hear this and uh, like it, comment, please comment. I wanna hear your thoughts and sub subscribe. We're all on the road to glory together. I'm on the road to glory. I'm on the road to understanding this world a little bit more every single day we're doing this together i'm learning from you guys you guys are learning from me thank y'all so much for being here i appreciate y'all we're almost at 10,500 subscribers i'm still in disbelief that this is something that we all come here to listen to and talk about the art world um i didn't know it was really a thing that people wanted to hear until i started this channel so i appreciate you guys thank y'all for being here uh, i love y'all y'all stay safe Y'all keep in contact with me and follow my new Instagram. I started a new Instagram, um, a post from my personal Instagram, because I'm still posting personal things on there. I'm not consistent with it every day. And I want to be able to give you guys information every day and, and be able to talk to y'all and interact with you guys on an everyday basis um, with educational and informational uh, content. So yeah, follow this Instagram. It's Mariah Elise, dear glory, I think. I'm gonna put it on the screen just so, you know, you guys have the right one. Anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all stay safe. Stay on the road to glory. Peace.